Welcome back, everyone. Today, we're going to talk about Sci-Fi Channel's Resident Alien starring Alan Tudyk. If you're a first timer, I'm Greg. And I'm Erin. And this is Fan Dummies. If you like this video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and bell so you won't miss any of our next videos. We have been waiting for a long time for this to premiere. Mm -hmm. Like it seems like, I don't know, maybe a couple of years now? Yeah, I don't know if it's been that long, but it's been a while. Well, they said that they filmed the first episode and then they didn't film the second episode until a year later. Oh, wow. Yeah. Resident Alien is a TV show on the Sci-Fi Channel. It's based on a Dark Horse comic created by Peter Hogan and Steve Parkhouse. Well, after the long wait, we've finally seen it. At least, episode one. And by the way, Sci-Fi Channel, you know, we could use some screeners. Then we could have actually done a full review but instead of a first impressions, which you'll hear later in the episode. But it's fun because we get to watch it with everybody else. Oh, yeah. We would still watch it with everyone else. <laughs> Aaron, do you want to kind of tell us what this first episode is about? The first episode is about an alien who crash lands on Earth. I mean, right up Greg's alley, right? I mean, <laughs> I've read a few dozen books like that. Yeah. And since he's stuck on Earth, he has to figure out how to live like an Earthling and pretty much just become an earthling for now so he kills a guy he takes his identity he learns how to speak english by watching law and order chung, chung. <laughs> <laughs> he believes his species is superior to earthlings yeah what did he say that they were smarter than lizards or almost as smart as lizards uh -huh. something like that <laughs> much smarter than pandas oh yeah <laughs> which I like pandas. We learned by the end of the episode that he came to Earth just to destroy it. So I'm guessing that's going to be the main premise of the first season. Yeah, and it seems like it's a biological weapon, like something that he would drop into the atmosphere and it would just kill all life on Earth. Maybe it'll just kill the virus. Yeah, maybe he's doing us a favor. Yeah. Maybe that's what he's thinking. It's a vaccine. Yeah, it's like an <laughs> explosive vaccine. The Earthling that he takes the identity of he is a doctor and of course there's a murder in town where the town doctor is murdered yeah so this alien who is not a doctor mm -hmm. who but takes over a doctor's body and lives in his cabin <laughs> has to become a doctor but luckily he's super smart so he learns human anatomy and watches a lot of TV yeah <laughs> becomes the doctor uh huh yeah, he's brought in for an autopsy on the old town doctor, and he plays with the brain and does a lot of gross stuff, but... It was funny. <laughs> it was funny. Is he going to end up fitting in with the Earthlings, or is he going to end up destroying the Earth like he was sent there to do in the first place? Well, it wouldn't be much of a show if he destroyed the Earth. Uh -huh. So I think the entire premise of the show is fairly basic you know, uh -huh. he learns to like humans and uh -huh. sees their positives yeah and decides he can't destroy them i mean is basic but yeah probably is what it's about if you like firefly the tick santa clarita diet rogue one a star wars story batman the brave and the bold doom patrol then you will probably like this show if you haven't already watched it and i read all those because they all have Alan Tudyk in it. So in Doom Patrol, he's Mr. Nobody. In The Brave and the Bold, he's actually The Flash, which is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. In Firefly, he's Wash. And in Resident Alien, he's Harry Vanderspiegel, <laughs> which is funny to say. I know. What a great name. Vanderspiegel. <laughs> and just happens to be the only doctor in town. Uh huh. He should host the podcast. What is it? Fake Doctor real life what's that podcast what? for the <laughs> for the dot like the the scrubs cast oh uh, that's dr harry vanderspiegel's life that's funny fake doctor real friends i think is what it's called <laughs> <laughs> it's like i'm not a doctor i just play one on tv <laughs> yeah exactly but i slept in a holiday Inn express last night so greg i have a question for you oh since alan tudyk seems like the perfect fit for starring in the show 
Is there anybody else that you would have cast as Harry Vanderspiegel? It's always tough to replace an actor that's doing a good job in a show, Mm -hmm. right? Like it's easy to replace an actor that's doing a bad job, but I would probably say the rock. Ah. (laughs) I don't think he could pull it off with his acting skills. People would be like, what a Fox. He'd be like, Oh, he's an alien. (laughs) (laughs) No, I mean, but in all honesty, uh, let me try to think of somebody good. I think maybe the only person that could maybe do a better job from the physical acting is either Johnny Depp or maybe Ben Stiller. Ben Stiller. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny Depp. You know, because he's maybe. all like. That's you know, funny. <laughs> you know, Johnny Depp. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Alan Tudyk basically forced this character to have like a physical acting presence, you know, like he walks kind of stiff, Uh you know, he's not real, you know, like coordinated. Cause he has to learn how to be an earthling and a human. And now that I've seen that acting happen, Uh that's the only way it can be acted. Yeah. But it's way different than the comics, which we'll talk about later in the show. I can't wait to that section. The supporting cast for Alan Tudyk is pretty good too, which I think has, helped Uh uh-huh you need a a straight person right you have the comic and you have the person who plays the role straight Uh uh-huh and that person who plays a role straight is is asta right so who who is asta sarah tomko she plays asta she works at the clinic and i guess she's going to be working with harry you know now that he's the new doctor Mm -hmm. and you might have seen her in once upon a time as tiger lily yeah, Asta is is great because she's like a little broken, the character, mm-hmm. and she's not funny. Like she's real <laughs> serious. You know, in comedy, there's the comic and the straight called the straight uh-huh. man has nothing to do with sexuality. It's all about comedy. Uh-huh. You know, that's how you bounce off each other, right? So the Astra character is perfect for that straight role uh-huh. to bounce off of. Harry Vanderspiegel, right? Because it's so ridiculous and uh-huh. she's really down to earth and you can relate to her and she's got real problems. Yeah. And, but he's crazy. Yeah. You know, so it's like that it, it really, really works. Uh huh. Yeah, it works because the town even itself has the real life problems with yeah. the characters and everything. Yeah, exactly. And then he's just out of this world. It, it, yeah. <laughs> then there's Alice Wetterland who plays Darcy Bloom. And she's the bartender and she likes bad boys. She's kind of a a wild person. Uh So in the very first episode, she's drinking. She's the bartender drinking with them (laughs) and dancing and having fun. You know, she's just into the weirder, the better. Uh So Harry Vanderspiegel is right up her alley. Uh She says something like, I like the bad boys or something, doesn't she? She's like, for some people, it might be too much, but for me, it's just right. (laughs) (laughs) You might've seen her on HBO Silicon Valley or in Space Force, which I think is pretty fun. Of course, you can't have a sci-fi cop show without a sheriff in town. And Mike Thompson fills that role by playing Corey Reynolds. Yep. And you might have seen him in a bunch of cop, a.k.a. law dramas that we don't watch. I haven't seen him in any of those because we don't watch them. <laughs> but you could have watched him in The Closer or All American, hmm. which is not a cop or law drama, but I think it's a football series, which looks pretty interesting. Yeah, this character I, I really like. Mm-hmm. And and Harry Vanderspiegel has no concept of like any earthly norms. Uh (laughs) So he completely misses all sorts of comments that happen around this character. Uh He just, he just doesn't understand them and it is hilarious. (laughs) And that moves us into the next thing. The mayor, Ben Hawthorne played by Levi Filer and the sheriff calls him mayor snowflake, Uh which I think is hilarious. (laughs) Of course, Harry Vanderspiegel thinks Snowflake is his name, uh-huh. <laughs> which is even more hilarious. You might have seen him in Mars, which 
we didn't watch. No. Uh, I think we tried and it was just way too, it was like a docudrama. Yeah. Like National Geographic or something, yeah, I think. Totally uninterested. Yeah. Just bleh. And of course, there's one person who can't see through his identity masking power. And he's a town resident. He's Max. And he's played by Judah Preen. And he's a small child. Yeah, he's that's like all I'm going to say. 10 or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're going to get into how the comics are different than the show. And I'm not going to talk about this character then. So I'll give you a hint now. Oh, okay. In the comics, this character exists, but it's a little girl. Ooh. And her and Harry are friends ah. because she sees him and she sees him as he truly is. Does she? And she asks her mom, is he a goodie or a baddie? And the mom says, he's a goodie. She's like, okay, I like him. Ah. And they're friends in the comic, which is really fun. Why well, see that coming with this Max character? Because yeah. Harry ends up getting drunk mm-hmm. and he tries to kill Max in his room. <laughs> Which is hilarious. <laughs> and his parents are like, there's no alien in the house. <laughs> I guess he has nightmares occasionally. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But then Max shows up at the clinic the next day. And of course, Harry is there. <laughs> <laughs> then you know they're going to end up hitting it off. I know. I know. They're going to be little buddies. That's probably going to be one of the reasons why Harry you know, hits it off with the humans. Probably. Because... Because he's going to see him as he truly is and still be his friend. Mm-hmm. Yeah. On IMDb, there are a lot more actors listed for the show, but let's save those until we actually see them. Uh-huh. That way we have some good stuff to talk about, you know, come back around this and talk about it once the season's over. But one thing we have to say is there's going to be some interesting guest stars, namely two. Larry O'Quinn, who played John Locke in Lost. Yeah. Who was super creepy and lost. Uh-huh. <laughs> and Linda Hamilton. Yeah. Who is obviously Sarah Connor from the Terminator series. Yeah, that's fun. Sarah Connor. <gasps> Wait a minute. What's the first thought to your mind when when Linda Hamilton shows up at another alien sci-fi show where the alien comes to Earth to destroy Earth? <laughs> She's going to be a cop. That's my gut. She's not going to be like a... Like a ter- another like a- alien? <laughs> no, no. She's not going to be like an alien hunter or <laughs> like, no. Do you think that they cast her for the show just because of that? They're like, hey, Linda, nudge, nudge, we're doing this alien show. You should, you should come join the cast. I think that one trick sci-fi has to do because it's not on Netflix, not on Hulu, is that they have to bring in some big actors yeah. that sci-fi lovers love. Yeah, true. And Katie Sackhoff's probably busy. so. <laughs> Maybe we just don't know about her yet. <laughs> <laughs> now that she's been on The Mandalorian, she's, she's, she's up like there. She's now. harder to get. <laughs> yeah. I do think the one aspect of the show that's missing, mm-hmm. I'll just call it right now. It's not in the comic, but the UFologist people, like the, the people who search for UFOs, like oh. in any of these kind of shows, yeah. there always has to be like the quirky UFologist people that saw him fall and like report it online and try to track him and you know what I mean? I guess we'll probably learn something about that because yeah. when his ship came to earth and crash landed, I mean, even the main Astra saw the light in the sky. Yeah. So I'm sure there's going to be some kind of like, well, you know, what was that on that night? Exactly. We'll, we'll hear something about it. Yeah. Well, we already know that the government is interested because we saw some previews for the next episode. And in the comic books, one of the big underlying stories is him being hunted by the government. Yeah. They won't leave that out. Yeah. I mean, we've seen the previews and they talked about it a little bit. Overall, though, pretty interesting. Yeah. So far, so good. Thank you for listening to this episode of Fan Dummies. Please subscribe, rate us, write us a review if you haven't already. As always, links to our Patreon, our Facebook group, and our merch store are in the description below, in the show notes, in the notes, in the area below, in the lower section. I think they get it. If you want to reach out, we are at fan dummies on all social media. Might, you know, talk to Aaron or me once in a while. Be fun. Say, Hey, say, Hey, Hey, say, not hey. in like a creepy, weird way, but like, you know, like a cool way. Like, Hey, yeah. 
Tell me what Star Wars books to read next. I'm going to read Ahsoka's book next, but I need something after that. Oh, you're just Star Wars all the time, huh? Uh-huh. Ooh, okay. Thanks again for listening. Bye. Bye. Bye.